I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? There's another paid request this time for Dan. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, randomness, whatever, out of the blue, re review, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is for a drama that I'd never heard of called A Home of Our Own from 1993. And the beginning says it's based on a true story, but then, like, somewhere after the end credits is saying, oh, this was fictitious. So I don't know if this is really based on a true story, or if it's not based on a true story. I just know the narrator says this is a true story, but I don't know who the real people's names are. If this is based on a true story, I, I don't know. I do know that it stars Kathy Bates, good actress, especially in films like Misery. And it also has Edward Furlon. This is a little bit after Terminator 2, which was 1991. I think Pet Cemetery. I think he had done Pet Cemetery 2 by this point. And long story short, Kathy Bates is a single mom. She has a bunch of kids. The oldest kid being played by Edward Edward Furlon. She works at a potato chip factory. One day, this asshole grabs her ass. She, of course, stands up for herself. Gets into a fight. And because of BS reasons, she gets fired. And she needs a job. She doesn't know what to do next. They're living in California. So she's looking at her bills, all this stuff. So she decides to take all these kids. And there's quite a bit, few kids. There's Elder Furlong. At least four or five other kids you don't know there's really not much development is done with the other kids like the other kids like one girl makes her mom something for Christmas one kid stupidly I mean stupidly lit a fucking outhouse on fire which then led to worse things and that might have been the same kid who fell and Got some, got hurt, got some nails in his back from a piece of wood. But yeah, there's, there's really not much to these characters you really explain or talk about. Whether it be character-wise, personality-wise, or anything of the sort. Mostly it's Kathy Bates, Edward Furlong, and again, the family, they're driving, try to find a new place. And just wandering around until they get to Idaho. Kathy Bates spots this place. Meets the guy who owns it. The place is not built much at all. It needs a lot of work. Kathy Bates makes a deal with the guy. Hey. Hey, I don't have a pot to piss in. We'll do free repairs in the house. And you let us live there. And hey, if we leave, you at least got some free repairs. And we want to stay and... I mean, we will repair and build a house. We just need a house to be at. 
And the guy who owns it, this is one of the, the positives, the positives I give to it, is Soon Tech Go. If you don't know who that is, sadly he's passed away, but Soon Tech Go, he was the main bad guy in Missing in Action 2, The Beginning, with Chuck Norris, which is one of my favorite Chuck Norris films. I love Missing in Action 2. But yeah, that was Soon Tech Go. He was, he's been in a few other stuff. I believe he was in Beverly Hills Ninja with Chris Farley. I believe he played the, the master in that. Who tried to help Chris Farley on his way. He's been in a few other films too, but I didn't. I believe he has sadly passed away, which is too bad. Uh, I, I always liked him. So it was, oh, cool, there he is. So it was nice to see the film just f for him. I thought he did a good job. Uh, in fact, I wish the movie was about him and his character, honestly. Because I, I did not really like Kathy Bates' character. I did the intention. I did the meaning. I did the idea is that she had lost her job, need to find a new home, drives these kids with her because there's nowhere else to go. Yes, it's hard. But this is all we got. We got this amount of money. And this amount of work to do. So she gets the kids to help out. And put tarp on the roof. And most of the film. Is these kids being poor. And building this house. While Kathy Bates gets a job as a waitress. At a local place. Edward Furlong gets a job at a dairy farm. And he has to walk to four miles to school. And Edward Furlong, of course, is the older teen who hates it there, which I don't blame him for hating it there. I would hate it there, too. And just, you know, these people being bored. You know, there's a they have an outhouse. One kid has to go, so he has to share the outhouse with his mom. Which, that's a scary thought, being in the outhouse with Kathy Bates. Again, at one point, they're fixing and hammering, worked in one of the kids falls... And there's a boy with nails. He gets hurt. And permits him saving pennies. And each bit of penny. Each bit of dollar goes back into the house. And Kathy Bates is a character. That doesn't want to accept help. And that's one of the parts of the movie. where, Or the points of the movie. Is that this is a character. Who I gotta do it all on my own. I gotta do it all on my own. I gotta do it all on my own. And the movie's supposed to be a story about her. Finally realizing you can't do it all on your own. Your kids are helping you. By the end, the town helps you. She doesn't want to accept help. She doesn't want to accept free gifts or help in hand. So whether that's ego, whether that's pig-headedness, whether that's whatever term you want to use. And I can... This is just not my kind of movie. This is not a rant. This is not a bad film. Like, it's not a badly directed film. It's not a badly made film. The acting is not bad. Like I say it was cool to see uh, Soon Tech Go in there. Kathy Bates, she's fine. I don't think it's an amazing performance. It's not like her performance in Misery, which I think is fantastic. But it's fine. Edward Furlong, he gets a bad rap as an actor. Now, there are times where he's not the best actor. He does fine in here for the type of character he's written to play. A teen who hates being poor. He does that fine. I don't know if you needed this narration that pops up every once in a while. Is at the very beginning, very end, and every once in a while in the middle. Saying lines like, when you're really poor, everything you see is something you can't have. No shit. The, one of the culminations is just the Christmas time and the kids for Christmas get, for presents, tools to help with the house. One kid gets a hammer, one kid gets a box of nails, one kid gets, uh, I forget what the hell it was called. And of course, Edward Furlong snaps. You know, all that money we had and it was Christmas, couldn't even get anything. Well, there's, there's a point where he, at school, at gym, his teacher got fucked up, so it's a bit pink, and the coach, like, reams his ass. Not literally, but it's like, why do you, why is there some pink? I said a white shirt. And Edward Furlong explains to it, tough titty. 
I'm like, first off, you can barely tell it's fucking white. Number two, if this coach, t if this gym coach taught like this in today's age, he could be sued and fired. <laughs> so it's definitely a, a change of times with the way he treated Edward Furlong. I'm like, this teacher could get fucking fired if someone had a cell phone <laughs> in today's age with the way he was treating Edward Furlong. I'm like, fucking dude, get your head out of your ass. But he can't get another shirt. And again, like... I, I... I get what they're going for. Because it is supposed to be a story about people dealing with what... You work with what you get and you try to make it work with what little you have. That's the motif. And people who have been poor, they can relate to the story. And... I don't know why you would want to see a story that you would relate to in that manner, but on the flip side, I can understand to the point of, you know, by the end, things do work out and, you know, the points to keep going and keep moving forward. And I can understand that sentiment. And I do think a lot of people would enjoy the film on that aspect. Uh, and if you're a big Kathy Bates fan and like, or if, hell, if you watch the trailer, it interests you. Yeah, go for it. It's not a horrible movie. It's just, spoiler alert, with Kathy Bates, I said it was hard for me to root for her because I, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. I'm viewing this character and I'm going, here it is in the cold in Idaho and... I might not have been in Idaho, but I've been in Iowa, and I know how fucking cold it gets, and a few tarps on the roof ain't gonna cut it. And there's a part of you wondering when the fuck or where the fuck child services is gonna come in. I'm surprised that wasn't part of the movie. Some type of child services. I looked at the way you are all living, and you're having your kids do manual labor like this. Like, you have ten nine-year-olds having a hammer and especially the incident like I thought when the incident happened when the kid fell while hammering and working and this is like a like a 10 year old kid or 11 onto that board with nails on it I thought okay we don't have child services in here no that was never a thing apparently that doesn't exist in this movie very surprised Greg it'd probably be, it'd be predictable well even though I guess it's based on a true story. Whose true story? I don't know. I guess this is supposed to take place in, I think, the 1960s. Although, if that's the case, nothing in it really streamed that time period for me. So I don't know if that's exact. I thought they said 1962, but I'm not. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. Because if that was the case, I forgot for after a while that it was that time period. But you know, like Kathy Bates, I did Edward Furlong's explosion of anger. You dragged us out here. You did all this. You were in the cold. We're working. You have all these other kids working. And the, the presence of Christmas is nails and a hammer and I can understand his his reasoning for that and then there's parts of Kathy Bates whips Edward Furlong and I, get, I keep saying I get that there's a point in doing this because it'll lead to something more by like one point uh, spoiler alert spoilers spoilers Kathy Bates is going out with a guy she gets beat up she heads home Edward Frohn's helping her. He says something like, yeah, I know how that feels. She gets this look on her face. And then the next scene, that whip that she's used, she hams her, hammers it to a tree as in, I will never use this again. And okay, that was a nice moment, to be fair. And throughout the film, she keeps talking about her husband being this piece of shit. But in all reality because the way she describes him is that he left her for a younger woman or left her for something else no 
he left them as in he died and he was a nice guy and he was a gentleman of a guy and treated her like a queen and so then she's saying very nice things about her hubby who died and I'll just spoil the ending just because the way it ends they did a new toilet the kid stupidly lights the out I guess that's the kid who shared the outhouse with her mom Kathy Bates I guess that was a nightmare for him too because he's like fuck this I'm going to light the outhouse on fire uh yeah you ever heard of someone called supervision where are child services and of course the, the tarps on the roof it gets on there and it burns the whole fucking place down and the kids oh I did it and Kathy Bates takes it well against the kid considering you know I guess that's the point is that she's grown as a character the more sober thing she would beat up, you know, whip Edward Furlong, but this kid, not on purpose, but was a fucking moron that lit at our house on fire that then did the whole fucking house on fire, and she treated him fairly well. <laughs> and ultimately, the town comes in and helps build the place, which I could buy Soon Tech O doing it, because he's, throughout the film, his show he's being very friendly and getting along with his family but th it didn't seem like there's a lot of scenes of the other town folk noticing this family or show like getting an idea of who this family what they're going through their hardships so the whole town building the house kind of came out of nowhere because the only time you saw the other people is Kathy Bates boss Firing the one guy instead of her, which was nice, because the, the guy was an asshole who treated Kathy Bates like shit uh, after beating her up. So there, there's that guy, and then soon Tech Go, and maybe this girl that might like Edward Furlong, and as the only thing goes is like there's a dance that they share later on. By the way, it would have been nice to get more of a semblance of the whole town noticing this family's predicament. Uh, I mean, yes, to be fair, there's some. There's the, the preacher, the priest, trying to give them stuff. So maybe it's not so out of the blue as I'm talking about, to be fair. But... I don't know, just... I'll, it just... Almost say like all of a sudden, oh, the whole town wants to build up your house again. Am I okay? I don't, I maybe it's the wrong choice, maybe it's the wrong type of thinking, but it just maybe go. Why do I think this just came almost out of nowhere? It made me go, well, fuck, you could have done this in the first place. That's my brother. Like, fuck. You guys could have done this in the first place and there wouldn't have been a movie. But I guess that's the point is that... But yeah, it would have been nice to see more of outsiders commenting on our lead characters a few more times. Or that, I think, would have helped that ending a bit more. And the narration saying that Edward Furlong's character... You won't believe this, but I never went back to LA. And I stayed in Idaho. And I still live there. I'm like, I don't believe in it. Because just five minutes ago, when the whole house was burned down, you did a big screeching yelling match at Kathy Bates saying, don't lie to them. Don't lie to you know, my brothers and sisters. Don't lie. Saying everything's going to be all right. But I guess that's the point. The whole town helped build it, and then things were all right, and that's why he stayed. And I'm like, oh, I don't know, just when he says, oh, I'm happy here in Idaho and I've stayed here ever since. Something about it was just a bit hard for me to swallow. That's me, it's just... I think that this is just one of those where I'm just on the right headspace as the characters in this movie. And like, Kathy Bates, I think her acting's not the problem. I get that she's a lone woman, lone mother, trying to do her best. But again, there are times where I'm like, eh, I'm not sure if I really like this character or not. 
Edward Furlon. Really, most of his performance is to have that same face that he usually has or get angry. That's really most of his performance. Half of his performance is to get mad at, at Kathy Bates or his brothers. Uh, Soon Tech Go I, uh, was my favorite part of the movie. Well, you said, I mean, this maybe just this isn't my kind of film. You know, a poor family go to Idaho, they build a house, some stuff happens, whole town builds the house for them, happily ever after. Okay, I, like I said, it's not a badly made film. This just wasn't my cup of tea. It just it's not a film I would ever watch again. If you watch this film, you got a lot more out of it than me about the human spirit, overcoming the odds of being dirt poor and overcoming it, and by the family unifying to build this house, and it's a symbolism of them united. Okay, but a lot of the kids, there's really not much to their character, and... There's some bonding among the siblings, but it seems like there should be a lot more. It seems like there's a lot more working on the house than the, the bonding between the kids. It was like Edward Fraun doing his thing, Kathy Bates doing her thing, and then the little kids like working on the house. That type of thing. So I, like the musical score, I can't say anything much about because I don't remember it. The cinematography, all right. The direction. Nothing that made it noteworthy, good or bad. A home of our own. I mean, watch the trailer, read the synopsis. If it seems like something, go for it. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say or say it's a bad movie. It just wasn't my cup of tea. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.